Photography has changed a lot in the last 10 years. The truth is, a photograph is no longer a dime a dozen, it's a dime a billion. As a photographer, how do you deal with that? How do you capture someone's attention and pull them into your image? In my mind, it comes down to learning how to become a visual storyteller. A good chunk of photography is about being in the right place at the right time. It can be a challenge to accept the reality that you can't control the weather. You can't control the environment around you. While the light might not be perfect, you have to learn to work organically with nature to find that one impactful story that is truly worth telling. When you were out in the field, you were essentially putting the base of your story together. You have to think of the framing or the composition of your image as if you're establishing your plot line. You're setting up your character. You're using light to control both atmosphere and emotion. And you're putting the viewer along a path. But you're letting them fill the rest of the story based on their own experiences. When you are out exploring in a remote part of the world, it can come with its own set of challenges. Sometimes that comes down to battery power, also internet connection. If I'm gone for two or three weeks at a time, I not only want to keep in touch with my family, I also want to share these adventures. I want to share these images and the stories behind them. For instance, it can be a real challenge chasing the aurora. Oftentimes you are forced to wait out the weather, but every once in a while, all the pieces come together. The clouds open, aurora activity goes off, and you see such an incredible sight. It makes all the energy and effort worthwhile. Over the last 10 years, I've amassed a large community of followers of about 3.5 million people over a variety of different social platforms. Having such a large audience not only allows me to share my stories with people from all over the globe, but it also allows me to take things offline and actually meet people while out in these locations. I first came across JPEG Mini through a friend. While I was intrigued at first, I was certainly a little bit skeptical. I think photographers are really picky when it comes to image quality, and the idea of compressing our images scares us a little bit. However, after using it for a few months, JPEG Mini is now an integral part of my workflow. The reality is, is that people are now viewing my work from devices and monitors with much higher resolutions than before forcing artists like myself to upload high-res images to our websites to keep up. That can drastically increase image file size and essentially slow down the speed of my website. By running all of my images through JPEG Mini, I can often cut image file sizes in half while losing zero image quality. That's impressive. When it comes down to the gear and programs I use, I need to make sure that I'm using the best tools that suit my needs. This is the reason that I use certain cameras, lenses, tripods, and why I use JPEG Mini. All of these tools help me tell a more engaging and impactful story of the world around me.